Hello and welcome to Network Africa with me, Cynthia Are. On the program today, President Omar al-Bashir of Sudan leaves South Africa. A top Libyan militant is killed by a U.S. airstrike and the Kenya army kills the al-Shabaab commander. Now before we look at all of that, here's a quick summary of the top three stories which made headlines in the African continent over the weekend. In Burundi has forced many student protesters to flee to neighboring Rwanda for fear of their personal safety. Since the violence began, Rwanda's government has set up several refugee camps along its frontier for Burundian refugees to stay temporarily. More than 28,000 Burundian refugees had poured into Rwanda by the end of May. Then, according to the Italian Coast Guard, some 109 migrants were rescued from two small boats off the southern coast of Italy on Saturday, June the 13th. Video released by the Coast Guard on Sunday, June the 14th, showed officers intercepting the two vessels carrying 34 and 75 migrants, respectively. Finally, Madagascar's Constitutional Court on Saturday threw out Parliament's impeachment of President Harry Rajal for short, calling the move unfounded and helping to avoid a political crisis. The president, who took office last year in the first vote since a 2009 military coup, had challenged the legality of last month's motion, saying there were irregularities during the voting. He has remained in power as both sides awaited the ruling by the Constitutional Court. Now, as we speak, the president of Sudan, Omar al-Bashir, who is wanted for war crimes, is very close to home as he's flown out of South Africa. This move has preempted a court ruling over an international warrant for his arrest. The Pretoria High Court was due to decide whether he should be handed over to the International Criminal Court, which charged him with the crimes. Now, just in case you're not too familiar with why exactly the International Criminal Court is after the President of Sudan, here's a list of the accusations. The accusations actually fall under three categories. That's genocide, crimes against humanity, and war crimes. Now, under genocide, the President is accused of killing members of the four Masalit and Zagawa ethnic groups. He's also accused of causing these groups serious bodily or mental harm and inflicting conditions of life calculated to bring about these groups' physical destruction. Under the Crimes Against Humanity, he's accused of murder, extermination, forcible transfer, rape, and torture. Under war crimes, he's accused of attacks on civilians in Darfur and pillaging towns and villages. Now, despite the latest development with the president of Sudan successfully leaving South Africa, the United Nations Secretary General, Mr. Ban Ki-moon, says the International Criminal Court's ruling on the Sudanese president, Omar al-Bashir, must be implemented. The International Criminal Court's warrant for the arrest of President al-Bashir on charges of crimes against humanity and war crimes is a matter I take extremely uh, seriously. Uh, the authority of the ICC uh, must be respected and its decision uh, implemented. UN Secretary General Mr. Ban Ki moon. Joining us now from the nation's capital, Abuja, is Mr. Adil Mofade, who is a former ICC prosecutor. Mr. Mofade, thank you very much for speaking with us on the program. Thank you very much for having me. Now that President Bashir is out of South Africa, what options are available to the ICC? Well, um, unfortunately, the options are relatively limited. The uh, ICC depends on state parties and even non-state parties to the ICC statute to effect the arrest and surrender of those that have been charged with crimes before the courts. Uh, this is an unfortunate situation where uh, an opportunity has been missed uh, when uh, President al-Bashir landed in South Africa uh, in the recent days. Now, now, so what happens next, basically, with what, you, what you've just told us? 
Well, the two warrants of arrest against uh, President al-Bashir remain outstanding. Uh, there have been, uh, you might already know this, there have been over the last few years since these warrants were uh, issued by the courts, a number of attempts by President Bashir to visit a number of countries. Uh, what had been done then, fortunately, is that these attempts were preempted by uh, the Office of the Prosecutor of the Courts, and a number of pleadings were filed before judges. When these decisions were issued by the judges, the uh, trips were aborted. However, on a number of occasions, uh, President Bashir made the trips, and uh, just like he has done uh, uh, in the recent few hours, uh, promptly left the country relevant uh, before the, the, the warrants could be executed on him. It doesn't rule out, I have to uh, hasten and add, it doesn't rule out the future uh, possibility of implementing these warrants. The warrants remain outstanding, and uh, at some point in the future, uh, I have no doubt personally that these warrants will be executed and he will surrender to, to, to the ICC. Now, Mr. Mufade, just before I let you go, do you think that the allegation against the ICC, which actually says it's biased by constantly targeting African leaders, could have played a part, no matter how small, in President Bashir's successful flight from South Africa? Well, um, the, I, I don't want to get into the uh, diplomatic or political reasons why this may or may not have occurred. What we do know is that the country of South Africa itself is a party to the Rome Statute and a member of the ICC. The other countries in Africa to which he has traveled are also uh, parties to the ICC, to the Rome Statute. Now, the allegations that have been repeatedly made in, a, in quite a number of quarters, that there's some bias towards the ICC, uh, towards certain African countries, uh, we, we, with the greatest respect, is without foundation. If one looks at uh, the state of play, many of these countries themselves invited the ICC into their countries to come and investigate and prosecute crimes that were committed on the territories of those countries. Now, uh, if that's the case, uh, why on the one hand uh, would countries within Africa postulate and say that the ICC is biased, and then on the other hand, invite the ICC to prosecute crimes that they feel either unable or unwilling to, to, to investigate and prosecute themselves? Uh, I, I should also mention that uh, the ICC is not restricting itself by any means to the African continent. Uh, the, 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 the other situations being investigated by the ICC are well documented public, publicly. Uh, the only thing that one should look at is where are most of the conflicts currently ongoing in the world? And uh, it happens, uh, unfortunately, to be Africa and the Middle East. If one looks at it, uh, there was a situation investigated by the ICC in Libya. Uh, there have been a number of noises made about the situation in Syria, also to be referred to the ICC. But that's a matter for the Security Council of the United Nations. The ICC, mm -hmm. to some extent, is powerless when it yes. comes to countries that are not member states of the ICC. Okay. So uh, with respect, I, I, I repeat this that those allegations are, are somewhat unfounded. Well, Mr. Del Mufade, we're very thankful for your time. Thank you for joining us on Network Africa. Thank you very much for having me. Mr. Del Mufade is a former ICC prosecutor speaking from the nation's capital, Abuja. Coming up, what are the political implications of the Omar al-Bashir case? We'll tell you in a moment.